Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James grounded family Bible study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Exodus chapter 37. And Vizio made the ark of the shittim wood, two cubits and a half was the length of it, and a cubic and a half the breadth of it, and a cubic and a half the height of it. And he overlaid it with pure gold, within and without. He made a crown of gold to it round about. He cast for it four rings of gold to be set by the four corners of it even two rings upon one side of it, and two rings upon the other side of it. In the book of Exodus, there are 38 rings. What we're talking about now. 38 times it's mentioned. And he made staves of shittim wood, and overlaid them with gold. And he put the staves into the rings by the sides of the ark, to bear the ark. So the ark is done and finished, built. And he made a mercy seat of pure gold, two cubits and a half of the length thereof, and one cubic and a half the breadth thereof. He made two cherubims of gold, beaten out of one piece, made he them, and two ends of the mercy seat. So he takes one piece of gold and beats it into these cherubims. Now these cherubims in the Bible are very interesting. And let's go to Genesis 3.24. Now there's two of them here. In Genesis 3.24, man has sinned. Adam is driven out. And that tree of life is still there. And verse 23, Therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. Prostitution is not the oldest profession in the world. Husbandry is. So he drove out the man, and he got placed at the east of the garden of Eden. Kind of funny. You look at the garden, on the east side of the garden are going to be the cherubim. But when you look at the tabernacle, the cherubims are on the west. You, you enter the tabernacle to the east. Cherubims and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. Now it says plural. We don't know how many there were, but cherubims. They're guards of that tree of life. So, let's look at Ezekiel chapter 10. And we're just going to look at the Bible. That's, that's the rule. Here's what man has to say. Ezekiel chapter 10. And we'll start in verse 1. And I looked, and behold, in the firmament that was above the head of the cherubims, there they are, there appeared over them as it were a sapphire stone over their head, in the appearance of the likeness of a throne, God, mercy seat. And he spake unto the man clothed with linen, and said, Go in between the wheels, even under the cherubim, and fill thy hand with the coals of fire between the cherubims. In between the cherubims there is a furnace, fire, and scattered them over the city, and he went in my sight. 
Now the cherubim stood on the right side of the house. This is the temple. When the man went in, and a cloud filled the inner court. And the glory of the Lord went up from the cherubim and stood over the threshold of the house, the temple. And the house was filled with a cloud. Sound familiar? And the court was full of the brightness of the Lord's glory. Sound familiar? That's how that holy of holy place was lit up. The Lord of glory. And the sound of cherubim's wings. Oh, they got wings. Angels don't. Was heard even to the outer court. As the voice of the almighty God when he speaketh. And it came to pass that when he had commanded the men. The man clothed with linen, saying, Take fire from between the wheels, from between the cherubims. Then he went in and stood between, beside the wheels. And one of the cherubims stretched forth his hand from between the cherubims unto the fire that was between the cherubims, and took thereof and put it into the hands of him that was clothed with linen, who took it and went out. And it's kind of funny because I'm not going to say this is so, but if you were to look in that holy place, anything that would have been a fire would have been the incense altar. And there appeared in the cherubims in the form of a man's hand under their wings. And when I looked, behold, the four wheels by the cherubims, one wheel by one cherub, and another wheel by another cherub. And the appearance of the wheels was as the color of barrel stone. And as for their appearances, they four had one likeness. They were the same. As if a wheel had been in the midst of a wheel. Rotary. When they went, they went upon their four sides. They turned not as they went. But to the place where the head looked, they followed it. They turned not as they went. And their whole body... And their backs, and their hands, and their wings, and their wheels were full of eyes round about, even the wheels that had four had. As for the wheels, it was, it was cried unto them in my hearing, O wheel. It's just weird. I can't even explain this. And every one had four faces. The first face, the face of a cherub. Remember that. The second face of the face of a man. Remember that. And the third, the face of a lion. Remember that. And the fourth, the face of an eagle. And the cherubims lifted up. This is the living creature that I saw by the river Shebar. Let's go to uh, Ezekiel chapter 1. I saw this before. Ezekiel chapter 1, verse 5. So chapter 10 is is the second sighting of what we see in chapter 1, verse 5. Also out of the midst thereof came the likeness of four living creatures. Get that. And this was their appearance. They had the likeness of a man. They looked like a man. They got wings. Oh. And everyone had four faces. Everyone had four wings. And their feet were straight feet. Now remember Ezekiel said chapter 10. This is the same creatures I saw. Chapter 10. And their feet were straight feet. No knees. The sole of their feet was like the sole of a cast foot. A split hook. That's where you get the drawing of Lucifer. Split hook. Unable to bend. Unable to kneel. And they sparkled like the color of varnish, uh, yeah, burnished brass. They had the hands of a man under, the wing, under their wings on the four sides. And they four had their faces and their wings. The wings joined one to another. They turned not when they went. They went every one straight forward. And this will describe also what those cherubims will look like when they put them on the mercy seat. As for the likeness of their faces, 
They four had the face of a man. Remember that. The face of a lion. Remember that. On the right side. And the four had the face of an ox. On the left side. And they four had the face of an eagle. Wait a minute. Something's wrong because Ezekiel Chen says man, lion, eagle, and a cherub. What is a cherub? Scripture with scripture is an ox. As an ox. Not one of them is missing. You got the serpent reptile class. It, that's missing. Should be five. The one that's above the throne, but we looked at him the other night. So let's take Revelation chapter 4, verse 5. Now, this pattern, Moses, please make as I've shown you. There's a mercy seat. Revelation chapter 4, verse 5. There's a mercy seat. And there are two creatures. Ezekiel tells us there's four. Bible with Bible tells us there were five. So, Revelation 4, we're in heaven now. The church is gone. The church has been raptured. We show up in heaven. Four or five. This is Apostle John writing. And out of the throne, I think you would call that a sea, proceeded lightnings and thunders and voices. And there were seven lamps of fire burning before the... Where do you get that one? There's the lamp. Which are the seven spirits of God. And before the throne, there was a sea of glass like unto crystal. In the midst of the throne. And round about the throne. Where that seed is, were four beasts, cherubims, beasts, creatures, full of eyes before and hind. Oh, who's that? That's what Ezekiel saw. And the first beast was like a lion. That matches. The second beast like a calf or ox or cherub or a golden calf. That's why you don't worship that golden calf. And the third beast had the face as a man. There they are. And the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. And their four beasts had each of them six wings about them. And they were full of eyes within. And they rest not day and night saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. Well, that's interesting. Now let's look at Revelation 6 1. 6 1. And I saw the Lamb, Jesus Christ, open one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder. One of the four beasts say, Come and see. Verse 3. When he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come and see. Verse 5. When he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see. And then number 7. When he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. Well, that's quite interesting. When you are looking at that ark and that mercy seat, you are seeing the picture of heaven. And when that high priest walks in there, it's almost like, come and see. Holy, holy, holy. And that room is probably not dark. And let me see. I didn't mark this one. Well, give me a few seconds to try to find this one. Uh, about these two. Sometimes I get in my mind to do it and then I don't write it down and I don't do it. No. All 
All right. Luke 24, verse 1. Luke 24, verse 1. Now, there are two cherubims. One on the left-hand side, one on the right-hand side, north and south of that mercy seat. And they're the ones that have wings. So you go through the book of Revelation you, and you look at angels, none of them have wings. So Luke 24, 1. Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, there came unto the sepulchre, bringing the spices. Isn't that one of the things that was supposed to be brought into the tabernacle? The incense and the, the, the oil? Now you know we're going somewhere now. Which they had, matter of fact, we're going to finish this chapter we're doing Exodus with spices. So there is definitely a cross reference here. And they had prepared and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulchre. And they entered in. And found not the body of Lord Jesus. And it came to pass as they were much perplexed thereabout. Behold two men stood by them in shining garments. They go in and there is the slab where the body of Jesus Christ was laying. And when you check all four gospels on this count. It's quite interesting that they're sitting on either side of this slab. As the cherubim sit on that mercy seat. Which has been rent the veil. For us to go in. And they're like hi how you doing? Where is the veil? It's that rock that's laying on the ground right now. Those women walk right into it. And say, Where's Jesus body? And these two beings show up. They're angels. They don't have wings. But all the representation of the beast, the cherubim that are there at the mercy seat, they are able to walk in after the resurrection morning. The veil has been already recorded, believe the Gospel of John is being read. And there the women are. And what's the first thing they see? They see a type of looking at the ark in the mercy seat. And one more place, Psalms 80, verse 1. See, it's not just this tent out in the wilderness. Ew, that's ugly. Nothing ugly about it. Psalms 80, verse 1. you got to read your Old Testament and New Testament and New Testament and Old Testament. I had one person tell me, I'm just, well, I just read my Psalms. Psalms is great, but it's not the full picture. When you can read the New Testament and see the scripture in the Psalms. So Psalms 80 verse 1. Give ear, O shepherd of Israel. Capital S. I wonder who that is. Thou, God, that leadest Joseph like a flock. Thou, shepherd God, that dwellest between the cherubims, shine forth. What is the Old Testament reference that goes to that? The Holy of Holies. The mercy seat. What is the reference that John the Apostle gives us after the resurrection of Jesus Christ? Heaven. Those women that entered in by the blood of Jesus Christ. So Exodus chapter 37, there is the remarkability of those cherubim. Now, two cherubim. And yet John tells them that their faces, Ezekiel tells us their faces have the four appearances. Of the man, the eagle, the lion, and the calf. But there are still four beings according to Ezekiel. And there are four beings. 
and John. Why there's only two here on the mercy seat, I don't know. One piece. In verse 8, one cherub on the end on this side, and another cherub on the other end on that side, be north and south. Out of the mercy seat make he the cherubims on the two ends thereof. So here's the mercy seat in the middle. Here are the cherubims on either side. You know, I think what Moses saw, I think he saw what John saw. And the cherubim spread out their wings on high and covered with their wings over the mercy seat with their faces one to another, even to the mercy seat word, seat word, were the faces of the cherubim. So those wings are covering that seat. Their faces are looking down into that seat. They're looking at God. And they're covering God with the wings. You can't see God because the blood of bulls and goats can't buy your salvation. You obey the law. You are not safe until Jesus dies and buried and rose from the grave. You'll go to Abraham's bosom. You won't go to heaven. But when Jesus dies, that veil is rent in two, and those women can go in. You say, well, that wasn't the most holy place. Isn't that a great picture of, though? So, now the mercy seat is built. We are working from the heavenlies of heavens on the way out. We're done in the holy, most holy place. Now we're going to the holy place. He made a table of shittim wood. Two cubits was length thereof, and a cubic and a half the height thereof. And he overlaid it with pure gold, and he made unto it a crown of gold round about. Now here's these two things are crowned. They are a picture of God and Jesus Christ. Kings. On thrones. America is a rebellion when you say we'll have a president. Won't be a Bible nation, you gotta have a king. Only Babylon had presidents. I wonder what we're taking after the nation. And he made thereabout a border of a hand breath, so it'd be about the hand of the size of your hand, round about, and made a crown of gold for the border thereof round about. And he cast for it, here's the ring, four rings of gold. And put the rings upon the four corners for yeah, that were in the four feet thereof. So these rings are where the feet are. Where the feet attached to the table. Over against the border were the rings and the places for the staves to bear the table. So the table is going to be carried by these sticks. And he made staves of shittim wood. Shittim in the book of Exodus, appears 26 times. 26 times you read that Shittim. You won't care how many times you read birthday in the Bible? Shittim wood is reference to God in his tabernacle. Birthday has to do with somebody dying. Either they lo lose their neck or they're hung by their neck. And partying. Again, we don't know if the shittim wood is, I don't know what you call a tree that no more. Or maybe it's just a name of a tree that we don't know what it is. And maybe there's a bunch of them. And overlaid them with gold to bear the table. And he made the vessels which were on the table, his dishes, and his spoons. Why spoons? Who is going to eat this bread at that table? Absolutely nobody. That bread is removed. New bread is put on. Then it's eaten. And his bowls. Maybe to make the dough for the bread. And his covers. So there are covers on the bowls like you see Tupperware. If I can use that. To cover with all. Of pure gold. So there are bowls in the tabernacle, and they have covers on them, like you do in your kitchen. 
table's done. And he made the candlestick of pure gold. We're now still in the holy place. A beaten work. Beaten. The cherubims were beaten and the golden candlestick is beaten. The olive oil or oil olive is beaten. He, the candlestick, his shaft, his branches, his bowls, his knobs, and that's like a button or knob, and his flowers were of the same. So there are three branches on this side and three branches on that side. All those branches look the same. And six branches going out of the sides thereof. Three branches of the candlestick on out, uh, candlestick out of the this one side thereof, and three branches of the candlestick out of the other side thereof. And there's one in the middle. Match that candlestick with Revelation chapter 1, with Jesus holding that candlestick. And that is the representation of the churches of Asia. Three bowls made after the fashion of almonds, like Aaron's rod. In one branch, a knob, and a flower. In three bowls may he like almonds. In another branch, a knob, and a flower. So throughout the six branches going out of the candlestick, just told you what that pattern of those branches were. And in the candlestick there were full four bowls made like almonds, his knobs and his flowers. And a knob under two branches of the same, and a knob under two branches of the same, and then not under two branches the same, according to the six branches going out of it. That's very important to God. How many times have we read that? We are repeating Exodus 25. What we're doing. Last night we repeat Exodus 26. Their knobs and their branches were of the same. All of it were one beaten work of pure gold. And he made his seven lamps and his snuffers, that's the tools, and his snuff dishes of pure gold. Of a talent of pure gold made he it, and all the vessels thereof. One talent of piece of gold. And he hammers this thing into the candlestick. He doesn't make a piece and glue it on or solder it on. It is one piece of talent gold. This candlestick is not told weight, uh, uh, height, or breadth. But the dimension given to us is not a dimension. It's a price. A talent of gold. Run that across reference. In your Bible, of talents. And then Jesus Christ tells us about, he gives ten talents to one man. He gives five talents to one man. And he gives one talent to another man. And he made the incense altar of shittim wood. The length of it was a cubic. The breadth of it a cubic. It was four square. And two cubits was the height of it. The horns. This one's got horns. But you're not going to tie the animals to this one. The brazen altar will have horns and you will tie your, tie your animal to it. Thereof were of the same. Now horns in the Bible is power. Strength. When Daniel tells about the animals, this horn was broken, and up came another horn. So, this incense also represents prayer. What is prayer with horns? It is power. You know, prayer has raised the dead. It has fed a starving people. Jesus, in his entire life on this earth, prayed. He's praying for us now. The Holy Spirit is praying for us. And he overlaid it with pure gold. Both the top of it and the sides thereof round about and the horns of it. Also he made unto it a crown of gold round about. This one has got a crown. The candlestick don't have a crown. Jesus said, I'm the light of the world. Not many of the world will receive that light. 
He made two rings of gold for it under the crown thereof, by the two corners of it, upon the two sides thereof, to be places for the staves, to bear it withal. He made the staves of shin wood, and overlaid them with gold. Now we're done with that incense altar. Now here the incense altar is put in the holy place. That thing moves around. It's either on this side of that veil or on the other side of the veil. It tells you about your prayer life. And then, like we read in John, uh, Luke, he made the holy anointing oil and the pure incense of the sweet spices. Those women were bringing the spices. According to the work of the apothecary, which is a pharmacist. You know, back in pharmacy times, I forget what the English call them, druggists, you didn't, they didn't open up a bottle and take out capsules and pills and tablets and all that. They would take the leaves, they would take uh, the spices, they would take everything that was in that medicine that you need, and they could get a mortar and, and they would grind it up, make a powder out of it. And that's what they're doing right now. It's all by hand. It's not machine. It's not manufactured. It is handmade for the Lord. And this is the only thing. Now let's read your Bible. This tabernacle built by the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of the Holy Spirit to these two men. These are the only man-made things that God accepts. God will not take man-made religion. He will not take man-made icons or idols. This is the pattern. It is to be followed. And they're doing it exactly as God said. 